you know, a tornado is coming through, your power goes out, this is a literal real situation, y'all, and you're driving through tornado weather. And then you realize that your car is out of gas and you have to stop at a gas station, but all the gas stations are closed because tornadoes are here. And then you finally, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, find a gas station <laughs> that has gas and you quickly no gas up and you know, you're trying to like, you know, you're working on quick time here because you know, um, borrow time, I should say here, because you're trying to get your eggs to your friend's house so they don't all die. So anyway, and it always happens, like the last couple days of the hatch. You know, if you think, when's the power gonna go out? It's gonna go out like two days before the hatch date. That's when the power is gonna go out, y'all. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So glad that you joined us today. Um, today I'm gonna be talking about dry hatching. So for any of you um, who are not familiar with the dry hatch method. Um, you can go online and read all about it. I've done different variations of dry hatch method um, over the years. I've been hatching chicken eggs for our own family's uses for 15 years now. I've um, been in the chicken hatching world for a long time. Um, in the past few years, I've really enjoy these little uh, nurture right incubators from Harris Farms. I will link them for you below. They're just a real easy go-to incubator. But with this new dry hatch method, I think that you can pretty much use um, several different types of incubators and you're gonna have success. Now, my one caveat to this would be is if you live in like high desert where it's very, very low humidity or maybe some parts of California or something like that, um, I'm not sure if this will work for you or not. But everybody else who has normal humidity ranges in their home, this is gonna work for you. And if you're gonna ask me, will it work when I'm running my central air or air conditioning unit? Yes, it'll still work even with that because we've been doing that and having a lot of success. So right now I have three incubators running and these incubators have all already hatched out um, three sets of chicks for us this year with great success. Um, and when I say great success, I mean about 90% to 100% um, hatch rate. Now they are from our backyard eggs that we're collecting and putting them in the incubator. So let's just jump into it real quick, dry hatch. So the basics of dry hatch is that you don't add any water um, until the last three days. The last three days, you add your water and you want to increase the humidity to about 50 to 60%, depending on where you're reading uh, your information from. So I had done that in the past with uh, varying success, but this time I came across a couple videos from a lady in Oklahoma, and I will link her videos for you below so you can reference them as well. And um, she, has had success for years hatching out chicks with absolutely no water at all. No water added at any time during the whole incubation process, even those last three days of lockdown, no water. And she has really great success with it. And she owns a feed store, she sells chicks. So this isn't like um, something that she just does for a hobby once in a while. This is, she had one of those big GFI cabinet incubators and it even works in them as well with absolutely no water added. So how do you do this? You're gonna ask, um, basically you're gonna get your hatching eggs. And of course, of course, hatching eggs, you want them to be clean and you want them to be unwashed and then you are going to put them into your incubator. Now, you can spot clean um, if you have like a little spot on an egg. Um, I, I have still had success with just taking a little washcloth with just some warm water and just spot cleaning a little spot. What you don't want to do is take an egg and scrub it all the way down. That's, you're probably gonna not have as much success um, with hatch rates when you do that. So anyway, you take your clean unwashed um, eggs and they're fertilized and you put them into your incubator of choice and you don't add any water. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Um, I keep my vent open about halfway 
to maybe like three quarters of the way closed, just a little bit of air. What I have found happens um, when you're not adding water to the water trough areas in your incubators is that these actually become air vents anyway for you. Um, air is getting into these holes. So um, for that reason, I keep my uh, main air vent pretty closed, um, you know, just open, like I said, a quarter to a half away. If it's really full of chicks, like at times there's been like 22 chicks in there. And so then I'll go ahead and open it just maybe like halfway, but not too much. And what I have found is that aside from very successful hatch rates is that the chicks um, do really, really well. They The humidity stays, for our house, it stays at about 30% humidity. Um, you can see this one right here is at 31%. This are just our normal humidity for our house. And it stays at about 30% the whole entire time. And then as the chicks start to hatch out, that humidity will naturally increase because you have little chicks hatching out of eggs and they're wet um, and the eggs are moist inside. So um, as they're hatching out, that humidity will just naturally spike up to, you know, 45%, up to 60% at different times. It'll just naturally do that. What this, <laughs> so another tip y'all is um, something to think about about and consider um, is what's gonna happen if you are incubating eggs and the power goes out? Do you have a plan? Because this has happened to us more times than we care to remember. And um, we've had all different situations with the power going out and we got eggs incubating. The first thing you wanna do is in an emergency situation, as soon as your power goes out and you got eggs incubating, you already have towels over top of them probably, um, but throw towels over top of it, throw a blanket over top of it, keep those eggs as warm as possible, wrap it up in a blanket, keep it warm. Step two is you're going to have to think, well, I guess step one would be, you wanna consider this, okay guys? This is something that you need to consider. Do you have a generator that you can plug into? Is it nearby? Can you work it? Do you have gas for it? Can you plug it in? Um, or in our situation, um, what we invested in was this little Opez, and this is the 1100, and this is a great option for running incubators, um, especially if you know, you're know you just a little lady like me in the house and your husband's at work or you have a big boy or big boys and they're all off doing things and you're like, man, I am not getting off that big old generator and filling it with gas and trying to run extension cords and like that's a big process. This little Opez is like your best friend. So I keep this little baby right here by my incubators because I have used it. And it's so, so easy in a pinch. Um, it can run all three of my incubators for 12 hours and I just, so the minute that the power goes out, I have my little power strip here where all my incubators are plugged in and I just unplug it from the wall, the power strip and plug it right into my Opez and then it's able to run it for, like I said, I think it's about 10 to 12 hours. Enough time that it buys you some time that hopefully your power will be back on or you can recharge this thing and have it ready um, to keep going or maybe your husband will be home by then, you can have your generator plugged in, whatever, you might have some options. Um, I have been known to, even in the past, before we had the big generators and before we had this little Opez, I had to wrap my eggs up in a blanket and take them to a friend's house that had electricity and let her continue to hatch out the eggs for me. That has happened. Um, and you just don't want to be in like that predicament, like, you know, a tornado is coming through, your power goes out. This is a literal real situation, y'all. And you're driving through tornado weather, and then you realize that your car is out of gas and you have to stop at a gas station, but all the gas stations are closed because tornadoes are here. And then you finally, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, find a gas station <laughs> that has gas and you quickly no gas up and you know you're trying to like you know you're working on quick time here because you know um borrow time i should say here because you're trying to get your eggs to your friend's house so they don't all die so anyway 
And it always happens like the last couple days of the hatch. You know, if you think, when's the power going to go out? It's going to go out like two days before the hatch date. That's when the power is going to go out, y'all. Like right when you're on the cusp of greatness. So get yourself a little Opez. It will treat you right. I promise, even if you're not hatching chicks, there's lots of reasons to have one of these. You can run something on it and it's just great. So anyway, it's another tip. <laughs> Why did I switch over to dry hatching after all of these years? And this is 100% dry hatching. This isn't like a dry hatch method that you're gonna read online, again, where you add water the last three days. This is not that. The number one reason that I switched over to the dry hatch method was because I was having failures um, in my hatch rates. Um, two years ago, I hatched out chicks, um, several different batches for our family, and um, they were fully developed chicks, they were in the eggs, everything was right, the humidity was right, the temperature was right, according to standard, you know, incubating procedures, not a dry hatch, um, but just a standard incubating. And I don't know what was happening. The only thing that I could figure that was happening was that, because the chicks were not even attempting to hatch out of the eggs. We only got like a couple chicks out of all the eggs every single time that happened like at least three or four times in a row. And I just kind of got discouraged with it because I'm like, these are fully developed chicks and they're not even pipping the egg. They're just getting to the end and dying in the egg. So it's just really strange and discouraging. Um, and it's stinky and it's yucky and it's just like, ugh, it's just disheartening. So um, this year when I wanted to get back into hatching out more chicks again, uh, I was just researching a little bit more with people that had had problems and then tried the dry hatch method and then I came across this lady, like I said. And so the number one reason why I'm doing dry hatch is because I was having problems with my normal incubation. So if you're not having problems with your normal incubation process, then I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're having um, low success rate with hatching out chicks and you wanna try something different to see if maybe you could hatch out more chicks or if you're getting to the end and you have fully developed chicks in there and you're you're not having you know good hatch rates you might want to try it you might want to switch over that's the number one reason that I did it but I can say that Tell about the hatch rates the hatch rates have been 90 to 100 percent using the 100 percent completely dry hatch method um so I'm I'm tickled to death and I keep trying to say that because I know some of you are gonna go online and then look up the dry hatch method and say, this says to add water at the end. It does. But again, check the link below for the videos that I'll, I'll give you um, so you just don't have my word to take from it. But the other huge benefits to dry hatch is that the chicks, they're able to very successfully zip um, the egg, just zip right around, get out of the eggs. They're not having any problems at all. I'm not having drowning chicks from high humidity at the end. Um, I'm, and it's very, very clean. It's not stinky. It's it not- It does not smell in here. Right, you don't- Normally it would smell bad. Right, you don't have any of the smell from like that heavy humidity and wetness. And then the other thing is, um, depending on your incubator, and I love this incubator because of its design, because it is a very easy incubator to clean. I've had several different incubators over the years. This is my incubator of choice because it's so easy to clean. Um, but usually I would have to grab this incubator at the end, take it into my bathroom, put it in the bathtub, rinse it out or take it outside, hose it all out and then water, I would wrap it in towels to do that, and like big bath towels. And then that stinky egg water would still slop onto the towels. Sometimes it would get onto your rug or on your floor. And it was just so stinky and nasty of a process. But this way with the dry hatch, there's no water. So literally when my eggs are done hatching, I just open up the incubator, take out all of the dried out eggshells, dump it into the trash can, brush it out with my hands, and then I can just take it straight over to my bathtub and wash it out with some soap and water and bam, it's like good to go again. Like no mess at all. Everything is dry. 
The chicks are doing great that hatch from it. Um, we have like 40 some chicks out there right now. Yeah, so that's another, there's huge benefits to dry hatch. So some of the benefits um, can be that you can um, stack your eggs. So I have added like extra eggs in here. I don't know if we'll turn it here. And then you can see some of these extra, but some myths with incubation is that the eggs have to do a full ro rotation and all of that. And in my research that I've done, um, they're saying that's not necessarily true. A little bit of movement um, to keep the eggs viable is all you really need. You don't need it to be a full rotation every so many hours and whatever. So I have been able to double stack the So another great benefit to this is that you can do a continuous hatching. So this could really come into play for some of y'all. So with a traditional um, hatching instructions, you know, it'll say, um, keep your humidity at about 50% until the last three days. And then the last three days, increase your humidity to like 65%, 70%. Some places will say 80% humidity. Um, I had heard in years past, like, you know, the higher, the better. You don't want to drown the chicks, but like, you know, if you can get it to 80%, that's like super great. You won't have chicks dry, you know, shrink wrapping and all of that but that's not necessarily true. The higher level humidity doesn't necessarily prevent any of that stuff from happening. But um, what it does is if you don't have water and you don't have high fluctuations in your humidity, you could do a continuous hatch where I have eggs in here now. If I collected um, eggs today and I just wanted to put a date on those eggs, and add them into there, um, I would add maybe the date that I collected them and the hatch date um, onto the eggs and then put them in here. Then I would have some hatching sooner and then when those ones hatched out, clean it out and then let those eggs continue to hatch and it's not going to mess up the younger um, eggs. They're, they're gonna be fine because it, they never experience some big spike in humidity um, so anyway, it's all really good information. And then the other little tip and trick that I learned, if you stayed on here this long, then you get this little bit. Um, but a lot of people do this. And I also saw um, White House on a Hill do this the other day was that, well, there's a couple things. One is that you can take, and I have not done this yet, but I have seen people do this and claim that they had great success with it. With these incubators and most incubators, the instructions will say for a optimal hatch environment, um, you want the incubator to stay in a room that does not go below 74 degrees and that does not go above 84 degrees. You just kind of want it to be in that happy place, it's right? It's 70 degrees right now in this room. It's 70 in our house, right? So our house usually, um, except for maybe in the, in the afternoon, it might get up to 74 degrees. So, but our temperature does fluctuate more than that. So if you want an optimal hatch, what this um, one video was saying that she gets almost 100% hatch rates all the time with these incubators, she takes a um, heating pad, puts it underneath the incubators and puts it on a low setting. And that little bit of heat just keeps the incubators, um, you know, just stabilized with their temperature way better and she gets way better hatch rates. We're in Texas and I was a little afraid to do, overheat. to overheat them with the, um, with a heating pad underneath it. Although I did, I really did think about using my husband's seed mats for um, seed starting because that just adds a little tiny bit of heat. But what I decided to do, which is what um, White House on a Hill was doing, Jake from White House, they just did a really cool incubator um, video. So if you're in the market for an incubator, you might want to go check his out too. Um, but I just took towels and I just draped them over the incubator. And it really does, add, it really does contain a lot of heat that way. Because right now, if you could hear this, but you probably can't, my incubators are running. See the blinking light? That means that this little heater in here is running. So sometimes 
these things have to run and run and run to keep up to temperature because they just have these little thin plastic um, casings and it takes a lot to keep the machine running. So what the towel does is it just kind of helps the machine to not be running all the time and it just keeps it nice and warm and toasty, especially if you have an air conditioner running or in the evenings, if you turn an air conditioner on, um, it just helps with the fluctuation. It also helps with hatching because you're not having any fluctuation in temperature um, at all. And then the other thing is that I do is I try to, when I put my towels over my incubators, I'll just make sure that the towels are in a place that they can still have air get to them, which with the, your little water trough systems, they'll have air get to them anyway. But anyway, so I keep all my little babies all wrapped up in towels. The other huge benefit of towels, you're getting lots of tips here. <laughs> but the other huge benefit of using a towel during incubating is that at the end, when the little chicks are all hatching out and being born, you can have a towel over it, which really simulates being underneath of a mother hen. So what I have observed over the years is that when it's left open like this and it's totally light and everybody's looking at the chicks all the time, and you know, when they hatch out of the eggs, they're sleepy and they need to rest and they're just little babies. They might've worked 24 hours to get out of that egg, right? So, um, so having the towel over it, it just lets them rest. It's darker, it's just cozier, it keeps them from picking on other chicks that might be trying to get out of the eggs or little chicks that might have just hatched. The older ones sometimes will go around and pick on the, the other ones. So it just having the towel over it helps so much to keep the atmosphere in there just dark and calm and they can sleep and they can recover from um, hatching and it's just a whole better scenario all around. I even keep a towel over my little um, brooder heater um, because we have the little um, producer's pride a heat plate in the brooder and we keep a towel over that as well for that exact reason. It just gives them a nice little place to go underneath and to feel safe and secure and it's dark and they just really like that. So that's pretty much it. Um, lastly, have I had any problems at all with hatching with a total 100% dry hatch method? I would say no, no problems, um, but I can just say that at any time you're hatching out chicks, there is going to be, it's just like any birthing process. If you're birthing baby goats or whatever it is, cows, nothing is 100%. So there have been a couple chicks that um, by that second day of hatching, I you know, had to go in and help the chick just to kind of break the shell a little bit. And then the chick went, out, went ahead and hatched out totally fine. Um, I had one or two that got a little bit of shrink wrap you know, um, around them. And I just was able to pull that off their little head and, and then they went ahead and hatched out fine. And again, I'm just gonna reference Jake from White House on the Hill. His video was really, really good. Um, I don't, um, if you want to know just my rule of thumb, it's going to be very similar to what Jake was saying over there. So my rule of thumb is that you give uh, chicks a full 24 hours from the time you see that first pip, give that egg a full 24 hours to work on hatching out. So I have two rules, rules of thumb when it comes to hatching out chicks. One is that once a chick is hatched out, I leave that chick in the incubator for 24 hours. Um, they're totally fine to be left in there. They have everything within them that they need to sustain life. They don't need you to take them out of the incubator. So once a chick is hatched, leave them be for 24 hours. What's gonna happen is they're gonna hatch out like popcorn and you're not gonna probably have just one chick hatch. You're probably gonna have a whole bunch of them, a handful hatch, and then they're going to be about 24 hours old at the same time. At that point, you go in and you quickly get them all out and then close up your incubator. That's not the time to like clean up eggshells or do anything extra. Just get those chicks out and put the lid back on and leave it be. Um, so your other, so you don't interfere with your other chicks hatching. 
So the 24 hour rule, that's number one. Second to that would be the 12 hour rule. And the 12 hour rule is that from the time you see that first pip in that egg, allow for that chick 12 hours for that chick to work on getting out of that egg before you even think about touching and helping that chick. Yes, it's true that sometimes chicks die while hatching and they don't have enough strength to get out of the eggs, but I give them a full 12 hours. If at 12 hour point, you're seeing that they've made no progress and they're still in that same position, then at that point you can go in like Jake was doing and you know take a little uh, set of tweezers and make that zip line for them. But that's done as a last resort. Um, however, there are times where you will save chicks. Jake saved a few chicks, I just saved um, at least two chicks in my last couple hatches. Um, that way, those chicks would not have made it out of the shell if I had not um, interceded a little bit, and that's okay. And that seems to happen more in those last days of hatch. So Jake was having chicks hatch even at day 24 and 25, I think. Um, so that's third tip, I guess, is always let your incubator run at least a good three days after. Um, you think that those chicks are all done hatching because you might have some late hatchers and you don't wanna throw them in the trash. You wanna give those babies a chance to get out of the eggs. So be patient, let your incubator run a, a good, I would say three days afterwards. Um, and then that'll bring you to the 24 day mark. And at that point you can probably call the hatch and say, we got whatever we got, but anyway, that's it, y'all. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you have a happy chick hatching season and um, try the dry hatch method. Let me know how you make out with it um, and don't be nervous about it. Just go full steam ahead and, um, and you'll make out great. So anyway, have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.